Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, you're looking at another project. Yeah, this is the 33 foot disc behind the 4955. And sure enough here on the left hand wing, on the back gang, the furrow filler fell off. And, and let's, you can see up there on the end of that one, that last outside disc blade's a little bit smaller. That way it's not making such a deep furrow as it's going through the field. And um, the spacer that goes around here is a two-piece spacer that clamps around it. Well, it started getting loose. I tried to get it tightened down. I never could get it tightened down. So it finally actually fell off out in the field and Dad picked it up. And um, I've actually, well, it's actually sitting out there on the little rock box on the other 33 foot disc. And um, however, this uh, washer piece, you can kind of see how it's, it's like tapered. And that's how it piece clamps on. And so when I, when I ordered the new um, a spa two piece spacer, I went ahead and ordered this piece new also. And um, well, you can probably guess to replace this, it means the whole back gang's got to come off of, on the wing. So there's actually three bearings. I'm going to get to work here taking those out, and then we'll use the forklift to come up underneath here and drop this whole thing down and pick it up and carry it away. Okay, to take these gangs off, you got the you got three bearings across here, here and each bearing is held on by three half-inch bolts. So I'm going to take the front and back bolts out. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to take and sit you all down right. Uh, eh, right there for now. Okay, you're kind of crooked, but I got you sitting on a better spot. I'll show you one of these. No, sh no sense. Sh I mean, they're all the same thing. Yeah, there we go. Like I say, I'll take the front and back bolt out, loosen up the top one, and then bring the forklift into it to take and pick the whole thing up and finish taking out the top bolts. In fact, uh, on the middle carrier bearing, what I'll do is I'll take and simply probably take all three bolts out. And that way all I have is just uh, the top bolt on each end, then use the forklift, lift, raise up a little bit, take the weight off, pop the last two bolts out, and then it's all sitting on the forklift. All right, now I'm gonna get to work taking the rest of these bolts out. All right, just got the forklift fired back up. Bearings out of the center ones, I mean the bolts. So I just have one bolt on this end, one down here on this end, so I'm going to come up here underneath approximately right in the middle of the forklift pickup. We'll take the last two bolts out and that should allow that to drop down. Okay, got the bolts all out. Okay, we're on the ground. Got to back the forklift up now. Now that I got the forklift backed up, I can, I can just roll it back by hand. There we go. Just sitting over here off out of the way for right now. Alrighty, well here's the gang. I just uh, got the 49 pulled up over there. I got the red tractor pulled in right here because as you can hear on the shed roof, got some rain coming down. So I had to hustle around, get stuff in, that way I get the big door closed back down again. So,
bearings still feel good. I put all new um, uh, blades and bearings on this disc. Oh, I'm going to guess probably six, seven, well, maybe more like seven years ago now. Might have been about uh, 2017. So for the bearings still feel good. So I'm going to take and um, pick this up at the forklift, get moved around here, that way I can work on it. Got it sitting here on the forklift. Take a wire brush. <coughs> Clean out those threads. Got a lot of dirt packed into them. Okay. <coughs> Now I just gotta grab the big impact, find the right size socket, and we'll get that spun off there. That takes an inch and 11 sixteenths on the socket size, so uh, hopefully. Well, you know what, I better do something. Take and roll that back on the forks. As much punt power as this impact has, it, it could actually take and want to roll it off the forks. So let's see what happens here. There we go. That didn't take long. Well, you got these portions of the spacer. I'm out to get a scoop shovel. All that dirt's going to start dumping off right here and throw it all out, all out the door. So, okay, well, I'm just looking at that. Oh. Okay, I guess it had two spacers on it, two big square ones. Well, that works. Well, there's one blade. I ought to grab the tape measure and just check that for the diameter. Put him right there for now. However, I think I'm going, to, I'm going to take and turn this around and go up against against the bags of soybeans. That way it's not out here in the middle of the floor. Okay, there's that spacer. It should have... Yeah, it's got like a round hollow tube inside there so no big deal on that and you always want to take these things off and set them on the ground well take piece, pieces off and set them as you took them off that way that way nothing gets turned around backwards right here's why you want to take stuff off or, or set it up the way you took it off this here's the spacer that you just saw me pull off the end of that drive shaft. And you can see this here's your bearing and it's got a spacer right here and one right here. And you can see this one right here's got a lot longer neck on it. This here's right here's a lot shorter. And so set it up like that. And so that when you go to pick it up, this end here's what goes on to the big square um, main shaft first. And that way you keep everything all in line. So I'll show you pulling a few of these off, but it's all the same thing all, all the way across. So let me see here. I can just sit you right up there. We'll start popping blades. <coughs> now 
then just set them up like that. Well, there's all the blades and spacers. Got the spacers standing up on end and with the blade sitting on top of them on an angle. Had to take all those off to get to this piece right here. That's the part I got to replace. And so that just... Well, let's see if I can do this one-handed by tipping it up, maybe. Well, maybe not. It's going to want to go everywhere. I'll see if I can sit you up on top of the forklift here. That might not work very well either. Okay, there it is. And you can see how it's beveled around that outside edge and that's what those two pieces of um well that two-piece spacer or spool go around that and, and it bolts together i'll show you what the old one looks like give you a rough idea okay right here's the old one and i'll show you on how to take this thing apart but uh, right there well, I can see this is a two-piece spacer and it just separates it's got the bolt here bolt there I gotta dig the dirt out same thing on this side but uh, and, and then then like I say you just put the two halves around that um, big ring and the insides of this here are tapered well that's what that's what begin to wear and um, let it fall off Okay, I got the furrow filler sitting here on the pallet on the forklift. Smack that a little bit with a hammer and then it knocked the dirt out of these bolt heads. First, first thing I gotta do, do however, and let's see if I can sit y'all. Oh, about right there. We'll see if that'll hold. We gotta get this gem nut popped off the end. There we go. Because it's got that stud bolt in there. And that also pinches in between those two halves of that spacer. Let's see here. Okay, that comes out of the blade. And I didn't grab my measuring tape, but like I say, they call this the furrow filling filling blade. And all the other blades are 20 inch. I think this one right here is an 18. That way, that way um, it doesn't dig such a big furrow out there when, when, you're ma when you make your pass. It's not digging such, such a big furrow. So, okay, here we are. All right, it's got that little square cube deal. And there we are. Yeah, you can see the break between the two pieces of um, a spool or spacer, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to grab my impact. We'll get these jam nuts that popped off here. Oop. Yeah, parts bouncing everywhere. Yeah, like I say, it's held held together by those four half-inch bolts. There. Get this here popped out.
There we go. All right, there it is. And it just has that big bolt. Get it turned back around here. Yeah, it's got that cutout right there. You put that bolt head in there. And the same thing on that side. You just put the two pieces together. So, I had to take that out because the new one, uh, I am assuming, probably will not have that. It will just be these two pieces. So I'll put the bolt and everything back into the new one and it'll be good to go. And then of course right there is the outside piece. And so these two pieces right here are the ones that uh, will be, I'll toss those out because yeah, that right there is really got some wear onto it. This one right here, yep, same thing also. So yeah, we'll get the new ones put on to it, and it'll be good. To, it'll be good to go. Well, we're pulling in up here at the Case Place. I talked to him just a little bit ago, and they got my new parts in. Yeah, a nice Magnum tractor right there, a 310. Those little compact tractors over there, those are nice. All right, there's another 310. Yeah, this is Bain Welker equipment up here at uh, Winnemac, Indiana. I've showed this before. Over there's a 315 on a, looks like, a, yeah, a Great Plains planter. So I'm going to run in and get my parts, and then we'll, we'll be on our way heading back to the farm. I'm heading back out of the case place up here. Happened to see they got a big field cultivator right there, a big sunflower, number 5056. Big bifold, and... I'm almost wondering if that number isn't the width, either either 50 or 56 feet wide. It looks like it. That's a nice sprayer also. A number 3250. So we're going to head back down the farm here and I got the new parts laying right here on the floor. We'll get this thing put back together again back here in the shed and um, I did a quick check up there when I picked the stuff up however one thing I, I did not do do I should have done when I was there I found out this here's the wrong piece this is the washer that you put out here on the end just like that that holds this blade on it is not the washer that goes on the big square draw bolt that holds the spacer on. You can see how this one's flat on that side, so when you put it up against a flat surface, it grips on this ring, this outer lip. This one right here, you put it up against a flat surface, there's nothing to grip to. So I just called up here and talked to him, and they're supposed to be texting me a picture of what they think is the right one. However, one thing I have tried though, and I'm gonna take and get the big square draw bolt out. I did go ahead and sit this down in here. And when I put the two pieces together, I just, it just may actually work because there's a gap right there. Well, if, that, if there's a gap right here between these two, that means it's going to, um, when you go and draw this together, it's going to clamp down 
and pinch on to it and not go anywhere. So I may be able to use this. I, I, now I'm going to go get the draw bolt. We'll put that washer piece on that draw bolt. Alrighty. I got the square shaft on here. Eh, this may be easier said than done. I may have to take and set it up on the forklift trip on the pallet just to be able to hold it. Get y'all turned around there that you can see. There we go. That's a lot easier to work on. Okay. And I just got a text from the case place. And the picture that, that they sent me. was the right part. Problem is that they got to order it ordered in, which means another two days down. I mean, we have gotten some rain, but uh, we'll see how, see if this here, here will work or not. <clears throat> and then you just take and drop your bolts through your two halves. On one end, two halves on the other end. Tighten it up, and you should be good to go. I mean, naturally, you'll have this bolt coming out here that you put your blade on with, but I'm not concerned with that right now. I just want to take and check and see if this is going to work or not. So we'll get we'll take and get them put together here and see if it pinches on pinches onto that washer good and tight. Well, taken. Tighten this down now. Okay, that I don't need to tighten up these two end ones here. Well, I thought it was going to work, but there's too much slop and play in it. Let me see if I can get it down there and see if you can see it. Yeah, see that. I should not be able to spin that on there. And what's going to happen if I put it together like that? Yeah, it'll be falling right back. This here will wear about right, wear wear right back out again, and I'll be taking it all back apart and redoing it. So. Well, nothing to do but call them up, tell them to get the right thing in. Well, I'm going to take this part, this piece here back apart. Like I say, right there's a good example. You can see how it spins on that. And that'll just wear out and water this spacer here out. And it'll, it'll mean putting in whole, another, another new spacer back onto it. So they got the right one ordered. And so hopefully it'll be in here in the next... Well, by f today's Wednesday, hopefully I'll be in here by, f by uh, Friday morning, and um, and I'll take that, take the one, the wrong one that they gave me back to them. So, hopefully we can get this thing fixed back up and going again. Alrighty, guys, it's Friday, and I got the right piece here. I hope. Let me see if I can sit y'all right down right. Yeah, that should work. Just to verify. Now. Mm. 
that is more like it. Put the top half on. We got that gap right there, so that means it's going to pinch down good and tight and not go anywhere. Okay, I think we are good to go. So I gotta go, I gotta get the big uh, draw bolt because this here is the very first thing that goes on to it. You gotta make sure you get that piece right there on the right way. If you're looking at it, you want it to, uh, what would be called dished out, like that. There we go. Now we're ready for a disc blade. Hopefully you can see it clear over here. blade wrong it goes the other way that does help <laughs> That's more like it. Ouch. Okay, now I just gotta keep going across here putting all these blades and spacers on. Once I get so many on to them, I'll take and um, sit it on the floor and just start um, uh, slide them all across here, and that should have it fixed up pretty good. There's the middle carrier. Same thing here. These are also directional. You got the wider. Got the wider part of the spacer that goes in toward the dish. But like I say, that's why when you take it, you take it off, you take it off so that you can um, put it back on the same way, and you're good to go. Also, when you go, if, if you have to change ba um, bearings, I oh I don't, I don't think I, I ever grease these things. Reason why you get grease in that. You shove grease that around that uh, grease seal, and then you will put the bearing out because it, it's just going to pack up a dirt and it'll eat that grease seal right out. But uh, that grease circ, when you put, if you put um, a, a, a new bearing on or if you replace all the bearings, always take and have that grease circ uh, on this side. So if the, for example, right now this blade is dished that way. Make sure you have the grease circ facing the same way the dish is. That way it's pretty much protected from uh, dirt coming off the blade right here. It can't hit it. Okay, got the big impact here ready to go. For this one here, I'm going to start out on power setting one, number one, then jump up to two probably. Uh-oh.
got to watch us wanting to actually take and turn the whole entire gang on the forklift. That is one thing I like about this impact when you have on either one or two on number one you hear it'll give like three or four knocks and then it turn itself off. I'm not letting off the trigger. See I still got the trigger held down. You kick it up on two it will give it uh, oh I don't know six or eight hits and then shut off. You turn up on number three it'll just keep hammering until you let off of it. So that's the thing that, that that's a neat thing I like about this big impact. Okay, let's get the two. Well, we're getting close. I'm going to call that good enough. Especially as I, I don't know if you could hear it on camera. But as it began to torque down, you could hear the ring and the blades. You could hear the pitch. There was a pitch change. It went up because everything is pulling down tight. Let's go down here and take a look at this end. Okay. That new washer piece, we're all seating in good there. Bearings look good, spacers, we're all pulled together good and tight. And so, if I remember right, that's about how much thread was showing when I took the thing apart. So we're good to go. Okay, right there's the top half of that spacer. And there's actually grooves that these uh, shoulders set in. You can feel it as you spin on there. Yeah, there we go. All right, there's one half. Here's the bottom half. Also, when you go to put this thing together, you got this bolt that goes out here on this end. It's also got this square deal, and that goes into the square hole on that uh, blade. So you put that up there like that. There's a cutout on each half for the bolt head and for that little square piece. Then you just take, bring it up. Now I gotta reach over here and try and get my bolts. Get one bolt dropped through there. And we'll go ahead and see if we can get that nut and lock washer spun on there. Like that, maybe. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Get it tightened down tight enough and won't separate. At least not too bad anyway. And right there, there's that side. Go ahead and spin the nut and lock washer on this one over here. And now we have it. Okay, right there's what I was talking about. You see how you take and it's got that cut out for the little square piece and then right behind that there's a, um, a notch for the bolt head. That way the, that way the bolt can't spin. And then um, now we're ready just to go ahead and we'll drop these last two bolts here in and tighten that thing up. And you want to take and tighten these up fairly even. Go ahead and jump out here. Come on. Go 
Okay, there's that one. And we'll jump out here on the last one. Uh-oh. Oh, no wonder why my thumb hit the button and got the thing going backwards. Okay, that's on there good and tight. Jump over here and take a look. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gap right there, but um, that's not gonna hurt anything. That means it's pinched down good and tight and it can't work loose. Now this bolt here, there will be just a little bit of looseness in that because see it's pinched down on that little square cube and the bolt comes through it. But uh, once you put the blade on and pull and pull it down tight, then it'll be good and tight and be good to go. Now we're ready for the furrow blade. You know what, I wanna check something right quick. Like I say, on this disc, Actually, on both 33-foot discs, uh, the standard size blade is 20 inch. Okay, yeah, I thought this one was an 18. And so, yeah, these furrow blades are two inches smaller diameter. And that keeps it from making a great big plow furrow out here at the end of the disc. So, yeah, you just put that on that little square cube like that. Then you got this end washer piece, which that's, well, I already showed you that's what they got me to begin with. That goes on there like that. And as you can see, it's also got a square hole. So that goes over top that square cube. All right, there's that. Got a square washer, pop him on. I'm going to grab a little bit of anti-seize. Got the anti-seize on, spin that cap nut down, tighten it up, and you're good to go. And we're ready to tighten it up. Now on this, I'm going to take and cut my power down on, on number one. got this thing ready to hang back onto the disc and I just got to get this pallet moved out of the way I've got to get the red tractor and this disc backed out and run out of the shed in fact I'll show you here on this one here what I've done I've pulled the cylinder off you can see it was leaking like a sieve and so when I took it apart yeah this uh, big piston seal was all dry rotten it had, a, it had a great big crack running right through it and so you can see all the dirt and everything. I'm waiting for a phone call to let me know, know that my parts are in. So hopefully they'll get them in and um, I'll get that put back together and put that cylinder back on the on disc. That is, the, that, that is the, one of the wing cylinders. So thankfully at least I can start the tractor up and move it anyway. I just, I just can't unfold anything. Once you get one bolt started, 
the only hidden kind of snug it up just a little bit and that will kind of help begin to pull pull the other two bearings into place it don't need to be completely that gap doesn't need to be completely closed just yet but just put just kind of snug it down and that'll help help to pull take and pull the middle and outside bearing it into place now that i got the inside and middle bearing with a bolt in the top holes i'm going back forklift up move it over and come up out up out here and we'll get that one right there lined up Just pulled the forklift back up and out of here. I already got the three bolts down here on this one. You gotta stick two more right here and the last two right down there and tighten them up. And then that'll have the thing all hung on. Then I gotta grab the scraper bar and put it back here on the back of the thing. Well guys, I was gonna grab the camera and show you getting this uh, scraper bar put back on but sure enough two of my cousins stopped by and um, that worked out perfect they helped me hang the thing so I'm going to take and tighten the thing up you can at least see that but it's pretty simple that bolt right there was kind of goofed up on top so I just undid these two bolts right here and just took that part off then you got a carriage bolt here and a carriage bolt there and the thing just comes off pretty simple Go ahead and tighten up this bolt here. That thing is going on awful hard, man. Well, that's odd. Doesn't want to go on too easy. Oh, no wonder why it looks like a lock nut. Alrighty, I just got that one tightened down. We'll tighten this in here. Okay, that's got that middle one. And you got this end one right here. And this job is done. Time to take and fold it back up and put it back down here in the corner. So, well, all right, guys. Hey, take care. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.